Good morning. morning. We're all in the presence of God here. And He's in us. And we are in Him. And today, if you're listening, if you listen beyond a second or two, you might learn something about yourself and about what's going on inside of you that you need to fight. There are things that we're going to talk about today. Let me start off with the message title. It is, I Just Can't Forgive Myself. Is there anybody in this room has ever said that to themselves? What were you thinking about when that happened? You. Were you thinking about Christ? Probably not. Not in the way that you should. If He's your Savior, then He saved you from what you did in the past, and you need to be forgiven. You need to accept His forgiveness. If you accept His forgiveness, you're forgiven. If you do not accept His forgiveness, you're bound to repeat your past. Amen? How, how many of you have ever repeated something in your past? Okay. Did you enjoy it better the second time around? Okay. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that God has said we must put away some things. And one of the things we put away is the dead man that was on the other side of baptism before Jesus Christ came into our hearts and made us His own children and forgave us of all, how many sins? All of our sins. And all of our sins are covered by the blood because we're a new man in Christ Jesus. We're born again. The old man is dead. It's buried. Baptism made that happen. After the baptism, the Holy Spirit came into our life because you can't be one of God's children without the Holy Spirit. That is the Word comes from the Lord, comes out of the Word of God. Listen, Acts 17, 28, For in Him we live and move and have our being, as certain of your own poets have said, for we are His offspring. We are His offspring. So who gave birth to this new man? Jesus did. Now, that new man is not the old man renewed. This is a new man. It learns just like babies learn. But it's learning the right things, not the religious things. Religion, we sung in a song a while ago, will parade itself in front of people to cover the sins But religion never covers the sin. Only the blood of Jesus does. And so when we're looking at the Scripture, we we have our life in Him. In Him we live. In Him we move. Listen to the tense of those things. In Him we live. That's present tense. In Him we move. That's present tense. And have our being. That's present tense. Everything that's behind us was done away with. We became a new man on the day that we asked Christ to come into our heart. Do you think that you can ask Christ to come into your heart and He won't? He says, if you'll ask me anything according to the will of God and you believe in your heart, He'll give it to you. The reason a lot of people don't have their prayers answered, they're straddling the fence. Let me, let me go to another part of what this message is about. We were talking about how to gain immunity, peace, and self-mastery. A couple of weeks back, and I said, the first thing that you have to do away is self-defeating talk. If it comes up and it's criticizing you, that's not God. Negative assumptions. Thinking something's going to turn out bad. No, no. That's not what the Scripture says. It says all things will turn out for your good. You've read that in Romans. Negative comparisons with others. 
well, I'm no better than... Wait a minute. That's not the person we judge ourselves against, right? Our measuring device is Jesus Christ. He's in us, and we're in Him, and the Father's in Him, and we're in the Father. And Jesus' own words on this matter. Jesus invited us in because He paid for our sins in full, not in part. It's not every time I sin, then I, I need a little more blood. No, that blood covered you from the time you were born till the time you die. He says if you sin, you have an advocate. That means a lawyer. <laughs> you need a lawyer when the adversary has been lying to you. And, uh, and you are going to go against the, the lie of Satan by allowing your advocate to put him in line. This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That gets said of you once the blood is your covering. Understand this? As He is, so are we in the earth. Never changes. You have to listen to what the Spirit's saying. He came not to make you religious. He came to make you like Christ. As I told people, you know, you're supernatural. Supernatural, not natural. Supernatural. That means you've received something of the, of the powers of the life to come and it dwells in you. If Jesus came back, gravity would lose its hold on you and you'd be in, in the skies with Him in seconds. Uh, that, how many of you can fly right now? <laughs> if, if I needed to, <laughs> there, there have been a, a prophet or two in, in the times past that just had things swoop down and take them up. You know, you got to remember what <laughs> nothing impossible to God. See, but when we're looking at things, negative comparisons with others, you never look at the flesh of another person and say, well, they did it. Well, they did it doesn't need, mean that you need to do it, right? Y'all learn this when you're kids. Come on, let's go cut school and do something that mom and daddy won't approve of, right? You ever did that? No, no, no. Nobody in this room. Hands down. <laughs> Negative ruminations about the past. Reliving in your mind and rehearsing something that's dead. Dead. It's dead. You'll never get self-mastery. You will never have the peace of God until this is dead. Disempowering beliefs about difficult people. Are there any difficult people in here? <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have ever gone to the mirror in the bathroom and said, I don't like what you did? <laughs> You're living with a difficult person. And it has to be put to death every day. You have to consider your flesh dead. Dead does not talk back. It doesn't walk with you. It's not going to tell you where to go. It's dead. Only one is alive that can tell you what you need to be doing. And He does that by His Holy Ghost that He put inside of you. Somebody said something to me this week about me saying, I'm your host with the ghost. Well, I'm sorry, have you read the Scripture? <laughs> the ghost is in me, and I'm in Him. So, understanding that, a desire to blame people. Well, they made me do it. Let me, let me tell you how deceived you are when you actually believe that lie. You know, they made me do something. No, you did it. It was a choice. And you went along with something. You had agreement with somebody that was out of line with God. They didn't make you do it. You chose to do it. Therefore, 
to get rid of that, you're going to have to go back to God and say, Father, failed again. He knew that before you got there. He just asked you to do it. Admit it to yourself. But then don't sit around after this has happened and beat yourself up because you did it. What you do is say, I'm sorry, Father. That's not who you want me to be. That's not His will. He wants you to be like Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm not saying all of us in this room are Jesus Christ. No, we're little Jesuses. You understand? It's that the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of Jesus Christ and it dwells in me bodily. Do I ever have arguments between my brain and my heart? Okay, which one of those needs to win? So, my my brain, my soul, makes decisions in the hippocampus and the you know other parts of the brain, but it makes makes these choices, and we have to tell our brain, no, 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 that's not the will of God. We have to stop it in its in its tracks. Because our brain, our soul, our heart, what did he say about the heart? It is an evil beyond all comparisons. An evil. So, we have to believe Him who has changed our heart, who renews our mind, and causes our soul to react in the way that it should. Or act in the way that it should. It's not a knee-jerk thing. You know, it doesn't do it on its own. You have to actually tell it, hey, you know that's not right. Well, how do you know it's not right? You hear the, the distant sound of the Spirit calling to you. You know that. He says, you know that's not right. So He's trying to stop you in the consideration before it becomes an action, a, a behavior. Amen? The struggle to forgive yourself. Don't you want to forgive yourself? So why are you listening to Satan? If God has forgiven you, Satan is a liar. And you need to live on the side that says, I'm forgiven. Not, I need, I need to be saved again. That happens one time, not every time you mess up. Salvation's a one time good deal. God doesn't say, I saved you, but you don't make the grade. Salvation is of God, it's not of man. And once He comes into your heart, that's a forever thing. And the adversary is trying to make you think that it's not a forever thing and that you can't make it because you have been so bad. Amen? Now let's, let's see. How do we treat Him because of that? Uh, I have this gun. <laughs> and it goes in my mouth like this. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was saved on this day and this is the day that He changed me. And that man that you knew is dead and this man lives and moves and have his, has His being in Christ Jesus. I'm going to give Him all the Scriptures I know about salvation. By the time I finish the first one, He's gone. You know, Satan is not going to stick around here. You're, I mean, you know it. People you preach to won't stick around to hear your sermons. <laughs> you got to take a note from that. If they won't hear you, they won't hear Him. Isn't that what He said? So, listen to me. You know, all the people that ever came that left because I told the truth, I welcome you back, but you got to get saved. <laughs> got to be born again of the Spirit. Amen? Or you'll just be going right back out the door 
because you can't stand the truth. You can't be on both sides of this fence. And Satan wants you to be on his side. And Jesus wants you to destroy all the works of the devil. He gave you power over all the power of the adversary. So, you know, he wants your, your life to destroy the works of darkness. To put a light on everything so that darkness doesn't exist. You can't cut a light on this room and darkness remain. When Jesus cuts a light on you, that's what He's doing. He's putting darkness away. And now, from that point forward, your life changes because He won't let you get away with it. Your conscience is like an alarm and it goes off like somebody just broke in. Well, they did. And He was telling you things that God didn't want you to hear because that was that old man. And you don't get in agreement with Satan without being a slave. That's the reason sin is a big deal. Because it always comes with more sin and more slavery. Chains, bondage, burdens that you can't get out of without Christ. Amen? He is the deliverer and deliverance is the children's bread. So anyway, I just can't forgive myself. That's the message title. We'll try to get past that now so we can... <laughs> we can actually tell you a few things about it. I want to share uh, a story that, you know, that, uh, you know, there was this week a five-year-old that got run, ran over and killed. Her brother got in the car and knocked the car into neutral. And the car ran over the sister, killed her. You know, I realize how difficult this would be for anyone that went through it. Trying to forget the past. Forget what I did. And you know how Satan is. He'll bring it up again and again through all those unsaved relatives that wants you to relive something so horrible. The past is the past. We don't talk about the past. We live in the present and we're looking toward the future. We don't put our hands to the plow and look back. It makes us unfit for the kingdom. But I want to tell you that God, you know, He is He's taken away my will to accomplish a goal for Satan. Because I gave him my will when I invited him into my heart. Lord, have your way with me. I surrender to you. I surrender to your thoughts. I surrender to your walk. What you want me to do You'll empower me to do. I don't say, well, I don't have the power to do it. No, He's, all, he's already given me the power. I don't even have to worry about preaching. I, I say, Lord, preach through me. If you can hear Him, you know He gives voice to that. He's already given a, a dead man a living voice. <laughs> Amen. But Satan knows how to paralyze us prevents us from making the kind of impact that God intended. Why does He do that? He doesn't want you to see what God has in mind for you. He created you for Himself. For His purposes. So, can you forgive yourself? I hope so. Let me get past that. <laughs> Though a few of us have face something as dramatic as, as, as that little boy. Few of us. Not all of us. We all need to overcome the thoughts that try to accuse us for what we have done. It's an accusation. Satan used to be able to approach the throne of God until Jesus came. Until He crowned the, the throne in glory. 
He's not going up there every day to accuse you now. He accuses you down here to you to, to get at God. And He's wanting you to choose at that moment to go with Him. Look, if I can't see what I'm stepping in, I'm not going with it. And that's what it said. He's in darkness until now. And if you're in the light of God, you know the difference between light and darkness. He puts a light on your path so you don't stumble. That's what the psalmist said. And so we know that God doesn't want us going down these dark paths with, with Satan. If He starts talking to you, you don't wait until He finishes the conversation to shut Him up. You don't want to hear what He has to say. You want to put Him in His place immediately. You're dead to me. I'm alive in God. And you'll never have a part. You, you have to have that testimony. And you'll never have a part with me again. Be gone. In Jesus' name, be gone. And He has to flee from you. He doesn't have power. That's the reason He's running. He's hightailing it out of there. All you see is and, and elbows. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Y'all remember when you were in the world. Anyway, <laughs> so let me go. We have to beat this thought today because it's beaten us over and over and over again, and that's too long. And, you know, I say beat it into the ground. I've done some of that work where I had to drive something into the ground. Listen, have you ever repeated something more than one time? That's a hammer hitting. You're driving the point home. When Satan comes, you say it, and say it and say it until you can't see him anymore. You want him fleeing from you. You don't want him sticking around at all. Oh, so, like this face. Anyway, <laughs> I can't forgive myself. Number one, realize that we only deserve forgiveness because of the blood of Jesus Christ. When people are saying, well, you don't deserve I don't get into that conversation. That's a, that's a conversation going nowhere. I am because I was, I am in Christ Jesus. That blood already was shed and covered my sins. And the adversary is wanting me to take up some, you know, he's, he's smooth about this stuff. Most subtle of all creatures. You don't see it when he's trying to get into your conversation sometimes. But he gets into your conversations to change the conversation into his agenda. Now God doesn't want us going down that path with him. He says as soon as you hear him, you need to lean into Christ and say, no, I'm his. I'm submitted to him. My submission is to him alone. Nothing in this world has my submission, but Jesus. And all of that that I led into my life, I have a wife, we submit to each other because we have submitted to Jesus. She's sweet like that too. <laughs> anyway, not because of what we did wrong, you know, never happened. It was as bad as we thought it was. We don't have little sins and big sins, darling. We, we know that. A sin has a death penalty on it. It is a big deal. Jesus came to put away that big deal. You have to give up rationalizations and excuses. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just human. Forrest Gump. Stupid is as stupid does, my mama used to say. <laughs> Look, you've got to get rid of the excuses and rationalizations in your life. That'll only take you deeper into darkness. Don't let, well, he said so. That goes back to the other things we're talking about. He said so. 
Well, it's okay for him, it's okay for me, right? Rationalizations. Looking at somebody else to get a license to sin. I don't know about how you feel about that, but I know how Christ feels about that. He said, be done with it. That's, that's the works of darkness. We're not of darkness, we're of the light. We don't give in to the darkness ever, ever, ever. Amen. James 2.13 It was that bad, but God is more good. Listen, James 2.13 says, Mercy triumphs over judgment. His mercy toward you trumps your judgment over yourself. Believe that God is bigger than what you did. Do you think that He's bigger than what you did? There's nothing that He's not bigger than. He created everything that exists and everything that exists exists inside of Him. you got to get rid of these little, I wonder what God looks like. Look in the mirror. Once you're born again, He looks like all of you who are His. He has many faces. In one place, He has multiple breasts, <laughs> as I do today. <laughs> Uh, I'll explain that later. Anyway, in Luke 22, Peter denied the Lord three times and Jesus forgave him. Just after he said, Peter, do you love me? Three times. Because he denied him three times. All of that denial had to be put away with love. You can see that. Love triumphs. It triumphs judgment. God wants love over all of your sins, not part of them. Love triumphs. What does that mean? Now, it's not a motorcycle. Well, it is, but it's not His motorcycle. Triumph. Triumph means to be victorious over everything. It's not, well, I won that battle. No, I'm in Christ. I'm going to win every battle because of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, Peter was able to forgive himself because Jesus accepted him. If Jesus accepts you, why are you still crawling in the mud? Understand, our Lord forgives you. And He doesn't want you having that record of wrongs dictating your future, uh, not even the next minute. It's gone. Tell it it's gone. Tell that sin. Hey, you're gone. You're under the blood. You've got to go into the sea with the rest of them. Jesus died for you. That's a matter of reality. Spiritual reality trumps this down here. Amen? Number three, give up your right to hold anything against yourself. Anything that God Himself does not hold against you, if God can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. His standard is absolute perfection and He forgives you. If He who is perfect forgives you, you're forgiven. And it doesn't matter what somebody that ha hadn't been forgiven yet says about it. I, I used to listen to the lips of religious people telling me how, how we're still human and we're still down here. I, When you became a new creature, you were simply not human again. Or, you know, you're born again. He says, you're born of the Spirit. That man is a new man, 
It's after Christ Jesus. It obeys the Father's wishes. It comes to the Father with every decision to find out the will of the Father before we ever do anything. And we have the Holy Spirit that's backing it up. He's telling us, it's time to get in the presence of the Lord. And you do this. And get in the presence of the Lord. Take yourself to a closet. Bend a knee one more time. And it, you know, He'll give you good knees if you'll keep bending them. <laughs> Some of you say, well, I don't know about any like, He said it. <laughs> Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. What is a transgression? A transgression is this. It's where you were trying to deal with it in your mind and while you were doing that with that faulty mechanism, you you had the Holy Spirit show up and say, mm -mm, that's not the way of the Lord. He changed your mind. He forgave that transgression. So, and it's as far as the east is from the west. I like that. <laughs> Stop rehearsing what you did. How many of you know that rehearsal is the worst thing you can do? And that's what Satan wants you to do. Because it takes away your confidence in God. And what it will lead to is a fruit you don't want in your heart. It's called condemnation. If He won't con condemn me, then I have confidence toward Him that He has not condemned me. That confidence leads me right into His presence. I can still come boldly into the throne room of mercy and grace because of what Jesus did. Amen? And you can't do any of these things with, I'm saying without Jesus. You know... He's the point of my spear. <laughs> and the adversary knows that. So five, believe that uh, guilt does not come from God. God doesn't impose guilt on you to try to get you to stop doing something. And Romans 2, 4 says, uh, it is His loving kindness that leads us to repentance. So condemnation is not loving kindness. Loving kindness is a different kind of thing. It's a different spirit. Condemnation does not come from the Lord. It comes from Satan. So, since this guilt and shame does not come from God, there can be only one other source, and that is Satan, the devil. Amen? James 4, 7 says, Submit to God, resist the adversary, the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God. You know, I've had it said so many times, I let Jesus open the door, not me. On the other side, they're going to have to see Jesus. They need to see Jesus in you every day. We can't be half the world and be a witness from Christ, for Christ. And people will look at you and say, now, I know what kind of person you are. Now, let them see the new man, the new woman. Put that out front of you always. Let that be your, you know, your every thought and every conversation that you ever have with another human being. It's Jesus. If you want to talk to me, you know, I'm, I hate to be so single-minded as to say, well, I have one conversation. And it's all about Him. And somewhere along the line, and in, in, in Anybody's conversation with me, we're coming to Jesus. We're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> okay. Number six, give up self punishment. Uh, some people have said to themselves, I'll make myself feel bad and pay for what, what I've done. There is not a payment you can give other than what has been given. 
Do you understand? I don't have to feel bad because I did something wrong because I'm going to Jesus. He's going to cleanse me from that. That means wipe it away from my memory. He's going to sprinkle my conscience from an evil conscience. And after I get through in His presence, I shouldn't be rehearsing anything that I've done. There is no glory me coming back and giving you contextual sins that I've committed. That book has not been written. There's another book that's been written. It's got all kinds of reasons for me living, not dying. Amen? The fact is, is that what we, whatever we have done that we cannot seem to forgive ourselves uh, for has already been forgiven. It's already forgiven. That's a hard one for religion to swallow. They think that it's by works. Works of righteousness that they come to the Lord. Let me say something. Your works of righteousness, Jesus has already given. Uh, the culmination of His opinion on that is filthy rags. And if you're still trying to work your way into heaven, forget it. You won't get there. You'll be cast away because you didn't receive the only way to heaven that was through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, <laughs> do you know we're insulting the very blood of Jesus that has paid for us when we fail to forgive ourselves and we're trying to punish ourselves? Okay, it's your time. <laughs> I receive mercy today because the blood because of the blood of Jesus. I receive mercy today because of the blood of Jesus. Though I did not deserve it, God proclaims over me that I am not guilty. Where we have failed, God's mercy triumphs over judgment. I give up my right today to hold anything against myself. I deserve to be punished, but Jesus took that punishment for me. I forget what lies behind, and I press on, moving forward in my life with God, even though I feel like I've blown it beyond repair. God will give you Holy Ghost Alzheimer's to forget what's behind. He will do that. Only Satan remembers what that was. And that book, as I say, hasn't been written. It was done away with by the blood of Jesus Christ. I reject this guilt and self-condemnation that the devil is trying to put on me. God is a God of second chances. I will no longer try to make myself feel bad to pay for what I uh, <clears throat> what has been done. The price for what I did or failed at has been paid fully by God in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, get this message in the face of those that need it. Heavenly Father, I ask You to put it far and wide beyond anything that we ever ask or expect. And Father, I ask You, Lord God, that You receive all the glory. You're the one that gave the message. And I praise You and I honor You and You alone. In Jesus' name, amen.